We have some good news in the week of Monday the 26th of August through to Sunday the 1st of September. We have beautiful energies being offered up by Venus in relationship to the God of Surprises, Uranus, as well as, hallelujah, Mercury finally stations direct. Enough of that retrograde already. I think we'll all agree. Yet this is also a week ahead that is the calm before the storms of September, particularly the last week of September. So I want you to take advantage of this week. It's like a little oasis of goodness little oasis of positive turnarounds for all of us. This is going to depend where these good things happen. The happy love and money surprises maybe of Venus and Uranus depends on your sign. So today I want you to listen for your sun sign to do with career and purpose matters. Your moon, because moon sign can be about your character's mind body complex, as well as home and where you live. Well, the rising sign is a character of you in the matrix. It's all about that avatar game playing idea. You are a real person, the sun, playing a character in a game, the ascendant. Think of it that way. So guess what, guys? I mean, it has been a bit of an intense week behind us. We had a full moon co-joined with a... Um, with, um, a full moon at 27 degrees of Aquarius, square, Aquarius squaring Uranus on Algol. That energy is still in effect this week because that lunation is still unfolding itself for us until we get to at least the September the third new moon. So we still feel this kind of reverb from that lunation, and that lunation is still telling us what it wants to do. So we have to remember we're still in the afterglow or after shade of that kind of intense Aquarius 27 degree full moon. So keep that in mind. That's still playing out in our lives. It started up on August the 19th. The other thing I'd say about this week is that we're seeing some indicators of with Mercury stationing direct some change around areas of our life that we felt stagnated in, stuck in, unsure of, waiting for the right, you know, clarity of directionality, what ideas we're going to implement, what things we need to say, what deals we need to make, etc. So Mercury stationing direct in the sign of Leo speaks to those areas of our chart that are now about to go forward after a long delay during the retrograde, as well as simply a long stay of almost two months of Mercury in the sign of Leo. So we're going to talk about that for each sign as well. Now for world world events, I'm just going to briefly and lightly touch on some things that I think may occur in our world events around wars and politics. But that segment of the, the video is always in the beginning. And if you're not into that kind of content, although I encourage you to listen, because I will say things that I won't repeat later on for your sign, we will, you can jump ahead, right? The comments, I pin the timestamps, or you can use the chapters by clicking the title of the video and you could trundle onto your sun, sun, moon, and rising sign. So how's that sound? If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Lori Lothian. I am using the Western Tropical Zodiac and the whole sign house system. Fixed stars and minor asteroids are my favorite play, play, play things. It's really a joy to teach astrology and I am teaching my sky reader class for the fifth time. Um, it's called uh, Sky Reader, Be Your Own Astrologer, Time Your Best Life. We're teaching the class in the last, starting the last weekend of September, it runs for six weeks, early access ad, I mean, oh. Um, you get early bird notice discounts and stuff. And, uh, you know, you'll know when the class opens up and you can enroll by checking my description box below under the more button where you can get on that notification email list. All right. Does that sound good? I hope so. So let's start talking about the things that I think are the most important in the sky. And then we'll pull up the chart. And we'll be drawing in your attention to what you need to pay attention to for your sign as well. So first of all, First things first, right? First things first. We start off Monday and Tuesday under the energetic signature of Venus sextiling Uranus. I mean, trining Uranus, trining Uranus. Venus is in the sign of Virgo. It's considered the sign of her fall, but she does make do the best she can in the practical detail oriented, you know, energetics of the sign of Virgo. And while she is in that place in Virgo, she will flow at 27 degrees of Virgo to 26, 27 degrees of Virgo to Uranus at 27 degrees of Taurus. You might even feel this in as early as 
Sunday, right? Sunday, the 25th, Monday, the 26th, Tuesday, the 27th. I'm talking about time zone, North America, but adjust for your time zone. Normally Venus brings good things. She brings love and money and kindness and peace and friendship. Uranus is shock and awe and surprise unexpected. Well, Uranus is also on a well star algal, which also can be a difficult star. That's the Donald Trump almost losing his head to a bullet, you know, malefic energy of algal, which can be about murder. And he has it on his midheaven, which is about potential for his life to end by murder. And so Donald Trump was almost murdered under the algal Medusa's head energetic of July the 15th. While Mars was there with Uranus squaring his ascendant and his own Mars. So to remind you, Algol has two sides to every coin, but this is a flow energy from Venus to Uranus. And it's also attendant with the lunation cooperating. What do I mean by the lunation cooperating? Well, just as we approach that on Sunday, we have an exalted moon in Taurus on Uranus as well. So you've got a kind of a vibe here that says this should be a very juicy surprise. The moon is in Venus's kingdom sitting on Uranus until approximately about 8 p.m. Pacific time on Sunday, maybe midnight Eastern time, uh, Eastern daily time. And it's the precursor energy Sunday, because at that time, Venus on Sunday at 25, almost 26 degrees of Virgo is engaging with Uranus with an exalted moon connected to Uranus. And then we step into Monday, the moon will have moved forward to Gemini, but has seasoned or acquainted itself in the kingdom of Venus with a positive exalted energy around lunation stories connected to Earth tangible resources, financial matters, earthly pleasures of some sort. It's a good night if you want your bed pleasures to rock it, is to hit the bed pleasures on a Sunday day or evening in the North American time zone, okay? But it's also for the world a good energy. It's something about the way we could feel the treasure trove of goodness that Venus is capable of bringing in an earthy way, in a tangible way. We're talking about Virgo. This is the earth sign, Taurus the earth sign. So let's see how these pleasures and tangible rewards and little mini treasures play out for each of us. And I will delineate this for your sign. And we're also going to move on to the next story. Is there anything else I'd like to say about this Venus narrative at this time? No, I'm good. Now we move forward and we move into Wednesday when Venus come Wednesday, you'll feel it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but it's exact on Wednesday. Venus will come into a direct opposition to Neptune. Well, Neptune is the God of what causes us to be rather confused or misled or deluded even, or we have fantastical, unrealistic illusions and rose-colored glasses about situations in our life, particularly with Venus love stories. Now at 29 degrees of Virgo and retrograde Neptune at 29 degrees of Pisces, there is some moment, especially with a retrograde Neptune who's already pulling back the tide on what's underneath the froth of illusion, we're gonna have a clarity moment like, come on, Venus and Virgo looks at the details, right? Those are the artists who are the masters of their craft. They are the like true detailed oriented. If an actor, it's probably the method acting technique. If you're an artist, you might be hyper realistic or hyper detailed. So there's something about the fine eye of Virgo, the detail orientation that she's approaching love and money stories with. So around that time of Wednesday, um, August the 28th, and maybe a little bit into like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like give it some reach there. You're going to have this sense of having clarity about an element of reality that was confusing for you connected to the Pisces Virgo axis of your chart. And when we get to your sign, I will delineate Wednesday as well. Finally, Mercury does station direct. So we all cheer him on with a big hand clap on the 28th, which is also Wednesday. After three weeks of retrogradation, where you have been confused, unsure, need to go back and reassess something connected to the fifth to the Leo sky in your chart, this is where you're going to do it and when you're going to do it. Now, 
things that you might want to reassess, things that you might want to reconsider. I want you to go all the way back to July the 15th. Okay. I know it's a long time ago. I can barely remember myself what was going on on July the 15th, but that was the shadow period in which Mercury would trundle back over by retrogradation places he'd already been. So I want you to go back to July the 15th and think about anything you might've been going forward on and then changed your mind and retrograded on. And we'll go into a deeper dive for each sign. I just want to gen generally say to you, what do you think is changing here? Did you change your mind? Do you have a new idea? Is there some kind of new um, con conception or understanding of what you can do or should do in the Leo part of your sky? This is an elemental fire year for Mercury. Gary Caton talks about this in his books, and he's a fellow friend and astrologer. He came on my channel at the beginning of the year to talk about the meaning of this elemental fire year where Mercury spends almost six months in the signs of fire, Aries, Leo, and coming up this fall, Sagittarius. We saw that kind of sky in 2017 and it is back again. So where you might want to compare is how was it for you in August, September of 2017? Those themes are back in the Leo part of your sky. Your permission granted to move forward between, now get these dates right, because this is going to be a focal point for all signs, your permission granted to go forward between the 28th of August and the 9th of September, while he's still in the sign of Leo, is what this story is about. Okay, go forward with clarity, clarity of mind, uh, new ideas, new divine uh, instructions, so to speak, <laughs> because we had a Kazemi here as well. And that Kazemi was happening during the August 9th full moon in Aquarius because the sun and retrograde Mercury were joining together. So you've got a new mission instruction from God, you know, mission from God in your Leo house and Mercury between get the 28th of this month to the 9th of September is going to execute some of those instructions for us all and for you as well. Now I'm going to bring the chart up and start talking about the sky by showing it to you. I will talk a little bit about politics. I promise not to talk too much about it because I really have a lot to say about you and that Mercury story for each separate sign. And don't forget, like, subscribe, you know, hit the notification bell, small little moments of your finger you're tapping the like button have huge algorithmic consequences. So if you want to be supportive of my channel, help me reach that 100,000 mark. I'm at 81,000 right now as I record this August 25th. Please do that. My Patreon community is going to get this today before you do without ads forever and without ads. But today, if you want to get content before the rest of the world gets it, then you might consider my Patreon community a place to join. It's only five bucks patreon.com slash lunatic astrology. And there's many other perks besides that. Now I'm going to share the sky with you and we're going to dive into this narrative of this week ahead. Now I noticed I gave you a foreboding intro and I was talking about why I'm a little bit nervous about the September 25th timeframe. And it might be just an interesting jump start to show it to you. And then we'll come back to it as we get closer to September 25th. But if I was to go back to like where we are, let's take us to Monday. And I'm just to punch us forward by one month, just for the heck of it. Right. I want to give you early notice about mm, a difficult September 26th timeframe. I don't usually use half squares or called semi squares. That's Pluto in about 45 degrees away from Saturn that week. But Pluto Saturn is what started the pandemic, right? Pluto Saturn energy in 2020. And so Pluto Saturn is associated with January of 2020 is associated with what we're already ex have experienced as pandemic central, a whole new world, a shift of energetics for the collective. And Pluto in a half square, right? A half square has an, has some sense of continuing the story forward. It does not have to be a pandemic story. Well, everyone is panicking about monkeypox. Are they going to rub up against someone's pussy body? Fine. Or take their pussy, you know, blanket and rub it on your body. Yeah, sure. Or have them sort of spittle in your face where there's pus on their lips. But let's be serious. At this point, it's not airborne. It's not an airborne particulate. It is a it is a droplet slash pus contact contagion. So it can't possibly look like COVID. So we don't have that story here. So maybe there's another story. Maybe it's the bird flu. I don't know. I'll try to figure it out before we get there. But this is a semi-square. 
this half square, this is something that's trying to happen here. Because we have gong gong, which is catastrophes and world ca catastrophes and catastrophic events to do with climate in a water sign with Saturn, the god of hardship, and Neptune, the sea god, it can be we're looking at some event to do with water calamity, flooding, you know, uh, tornadoes, or hurricanes, that kind of thing. It will be hurricane season. We may have a very damaging hurricane. And across the way, opposite it all, we have Apophis, who's also associated with calamitous catastrophes that could destroy the earth. So we have this energy that's really intense happening, Apophis opposite Neptune, the sea god, around the last week of September. I did some research and I tracked Apophis and we have Mars connected to chaos and the moon. If I go back a day in a sign of water, that chaos Mars moon, square Saturn, Apophis opposite Neptune, Mercury anoretic on the star and everything on the star of Elkade, which is also about mass calamities and female mourners. I'm giving you a heads up to watch out for the September 25th week ahead. That video I'll cover it as well. This feels in advance like a climate event, most likely. And I tracked Apophis on my own time. The Fukushima, Fukushima so ever since Gong Gong got into Pisces, and it'll be there for another 120 years or something. He's a trans Neptunian, but he got here in 2007, February. And we began to see things like the Fukushima radiation disaster, I mean, water tsunami story happen. For example, in 2011, exactly when Gong Gong was with the South Node. No, Apophis was with the South Node in Gemini, exactly squaring Gong Gong. We saw in 2007 mass tornadoes, floods, and weird climate events in April in the United States of 2007 when we saw Apophis conjunct Gong Gong in the United States. So I can tell you I'm now using Apophis and Gong Gong especially with Gong Gong and water for the rest of our lives to do with calamitous weather events that involve water, but calamitous mass sorrow at Alcade at the end of September looks a bit gnarly. Neptune has been associated with poisons, drugs, and viruses. So we can't rule out pandemic stories hitting a critical point at the last week of September. I asked myself, what can delay the United States election? I have two thoughts. It, a massive climate catastrophe that takes out an area that would normally vote, an earthquake in LA, for example, or a tsunami or a tidal wave or something. And what I'm worried about is that means that you could have an election, but you might have a whole chunk of the electorate who can't vote around the election, infrastructure's down, power grids are down, and that will delay the election. Or number two, we do have some kind of pandemic thing that we have to like all hunker back down. I don't think that's it. Or three, we have a terrorist event that shakes and rattles and rolls everything and everyone, and there's a pause or delay. I don't know if there's a delay in the election, but rather a delay in the results, but there is intense, to unexpected reversals. I will go back to the simple thing that Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, if he stays in, he may be ill and pull away. Both of them have Jupiter in refrainment from Kamala's 24 degree North node ascendant combo in Gemini and Trump's 22 degree sun in Gemini. What happens is in October is that Pluto, uh, Jupiter noses up against their sun and ascendant and then backs away. So the back away is like going to coronate as a king and then turn around before the election and back off. That means a delay in coronation and Jupiter will go direct and the coronation will happen. Why will there be a delay? I don't understand why yet. Now, some people mentioned to me that I called, I called it wrong when I said that Kamala would have a very difficult week at the national con, um, at the Democratic National Convention. And it seems like as I record this, it was fine. However, it's first of all still in play because the um the new moon, the full moon on her Saturn opposite her Mars square, her Jupiter is still playing out. Okay, that's still playing out for another week or so. But also when RFK threw his hat into Trump's ring for someone who's in a competition and running to compete against another party, that is a setback. How big a setback can it be or will it be? 
only if it impacts a swing state and it keeps her from getting the 200, 100, 270 electoral votes needed. And that is the issue because what happened is RFK took himself off the ballot in swing states, giving Trump his voters if his voters want to move over. And a lot of his voters are anti-vaccine mandate and a lot of Republicans are anti-vaccine mandate. So you may see that that one move of RFK scooching over to team Trump or team Republican, because if Trump isn't here, I bet you any money it's Nikki Haley that someone they're going to punch into his place. I prefer Tulsi, though. And bottom line, you're going to end up nonetheless with this kind of sense of maybe a very close election and maybe even going to the point where they have to do the election in the old way where the Senate and Congress choose. And sometimes you even get like a president, I think, and a vice president from two different parties. Now, the thing about that is I'm going to say it now. I'm going to say it again in my election panel. I've come to the conclusion that the as, as of the 25th, bar a massive change of circumstance, that the Democrats will win the election. That's astrology. I'm Canadian. I don't care. It's Tweedledee and Tweedledum. I don't care. A, a Republican or Democrat, Harris Trump or Trump's replacement, Tweedledee or Tweedledum. I don't care. But I'm Canadian. I'm not voting there. And I'm pretty apolitical in general. And so I'm just using astrology to say, I do say that I think at this juncture, I'm at 80% convinced, unless there's something I've missed in the charts, that it is the Democrats that will retain power and win this election. I couldn't see how it was going to happen with Biden, by the way, but I could still see strength in the Democrat side when Biden stepped down and they took out like the, um, what, what is it like the, the obvious monkey wrench problem, right? Um, then it, now it's a new story. And I know, guys, I totally get it. I know that there's mainstream media that's a uh, media organ for the Democrats. I totally understand the d- dynamics that are going on in the country, the United States right now. It's all pay to play. Who has the money? I get it. I know that they're puppets. I know that pretty well, pretty sure that Biden is just a puppet of whoever's running the show because his mind's gone. But I mean, Kamala will be the same puppet. Nothing will fundamentally change other than we can all yeah, go, yay, a woman. There's a woman in power. Like that should have happened ages ago. All right. So let's get going and talk about the one more thing about the world, and then we'll address things for your sign. So Apophis, sorry, Apophis, sort of the world creator, world destroyer asteroid, has a really weird elliptical orbit. It's really slow moving, okay? And I took some notes because, well, maybe I'll say that for the other video, but Apophis is going to move through Virgo. And and the reason I'm bringing it up because we see this week as he gets ready to go through the sign of Virgo, where he will be, where is my Apophis notes when you need them? So it happens when you have a crazy chaotic mess in your office, right? That's my, my story, I'm sticking with it. Oh, maybe I put it on the back of this other one. Hang on. Here it is. Okay. I was saying because of the elliptical orbit of Apophis, an asteroid, right, in the asteroid belt, um, he has a strange amount of time in various signs. And he's in the sign of Virgo, where he's about to head into right here. I'll go by day. Watch what I'm doing. Maybe I'll annotate for you. Yeah. So there he goes, right? Watch my annotation. There's Apophis, this sort of world destroyer asteroid in Virgo. And he's going to be here. And that's unfortunate because we have a star that's very malefic here. And that's Alcade, right? And Alcade is mass calamity and calamitous events and the star of female mourners. And also it's associated with fires. But I don't know about that with Apophis. But Apophis could bring fires as well. And Apophis is going to travel through Virgo co-present with Alcade from September of 2000. And, oh, let me get the date. Okay. I'm going to just stop the share. Well, I double check my dates. Give me a sec. Cause I had it all written down, but I don't know if I know my notes are all that accurate. All right. So it was last fall in September that Apophis moved into the sign of Virgo. And I want to bring it up because we all know a Middle East war began around the time of this incursion. And it wasn't exact, but you can see co-presence. This is on October the 8th, the day after Hamas invaded the Israel territory and killed people. And what we see here 
some soldiers, some not soldiers and abducted people. What you see is Apophis is moving towards the star of female mourners, a mass calamities, and with a Venus who is in the sign of her fall. And Venus is the ruling planet for the nation of Israel. And she's fallen with an asteroid for mass calamity opposite Gong Gong. Now, Gong Gong is a sea serpent that can cause catastrophes, basically. I don't know if they have to be waterborne or not, question mark, right? But if we want to continue on with water catastrophes, a lack of clean drinking water also hit the people of Gaza as Israel then started to cut off water supply and other calamities such as the Houthis in the Red Sea, on and on we go. So we can make an assumption as we see Apophis increasingly connected to the star of female mourners during October, while well, we also had an eclipse as well with the South Node co-present, uh, like on the eclipse of the nation of Israel. This is a big story. And we see Apophis getting bundled right back into the mix. So Apophis is not without sort of geopolitical strife stories as well, I'm seeing as just particular mass destruction. So Calamity is Alcade, mass calamity. Apophis is the evil serpent that swallows the sun god Ra, but it's connected to the idea that this is an asteroid that circles the earth and will be pretty close to the earth, I think, in 2027. And it, well, not circles the earth, but comes into regular proximity to the earth and has the potential for hitting us and causing the end of the world as we know it. Therefore, it is the evil enemy of the sun god who swallows everything up. So that's the why it's named that, but it is an asteroid that could indeed cause the end of civilization in its archetypal, can it slam into the earth story or not? So Apophis, when it does things in our archetypal sky, creates similar kinds of reverbs as if it was actually doing, you know, bad things like falling into the earth from the heavens. And then we're going to go back to this time frame. Forget about October. I don't want you to even look ahead. It might scare us all. <laughs> and we'll go back to this week where we're doing the astrology. And we'll go back another few days and we'll get into it. Okay, so remember I told you it was a calm before the storms? That's why. This is one of the calm before the storms, times of our reality, where we can see that we may have a sense of impending disaster, but it's not here. We notice that um, Apophis, <clears throat> which he is traveling through this part of the sky right now, we notice that Apophis is in a place. And by the way, the next time Apophis moves through the sign of Virgo, when he finishes here in September of 25, so September of 2023, due to retrogradation, to September of 2025, we have Apophis in the sign of Virgo, continually hooking up with the star of female mourners. <clears throat> but also the next time we see him in the sign of Virgo is February is it Feb yeah, February of 2033? So it's quite a ways away again before we get this energy playing out in our collective sky. Oh, wait, wrong answer, Lori. The next time, never mind, it's not 2033. That's the next time he's right back in the water sign of Pisces, as he was in April, May of 2007, as he was in February of 2000. Yeah. So never mind. Never mind. Obviously what happens when you take quick notes for yourself, but I want to mention Apophis is sitting here on top of the 28th degree Donald Trump's ascendant. And conceivably, this is difficult for Donald Trump. Conceivably, Mercury stations direct on Wednesday and whatever Apophis, this, you know, asteroid of the evil serpent, the serpent is the ser evil serpent as well as the sun god Ra, and it's about facing our inner darkness in the software. This is Donald Trump's ascendant that Apophis is sitting on. Mercury has retrograded over Donald Trump's ascendant. We'll cross back over between this conversation of August the 28th to uh, September 9th. Mercury will cross over his Mars actions and decisions of Donald Trump and over his ascendant ideas and announcements. Expect some significant ideas, announcements, details will be pending between the about the 28th, 29th of the month through to September 9th from Donald Trump. Um, what will he be sharing with the world? What kind of change of mind, change of direction might be ongoing? Um, and if I just want to get rid of that for a sec, I will push us forward a little bit. So by day, we see 
Here we have August the 28th, my time zone, I got 7.38 p.m. Anyway, Mercury is direct sometime during the day, station direct sometime during the day here, moving towards forward momentum on August the 28th. Apophis has already left Donald Trump's ascendant as of the 27th, which is the 27th this week ahead, Tuesday. Tuesday is Mars Day, by the way. So with Mercury moving forward and now Apophis off of Donald Trump's ascendant, there's something Donald Trump's going through intensity-wise Monday and Tuesday. Then we see this energy of Mercury. And don't forget, Apophis is destroyer of the sun god. The sun god is Apollo. Apollo is conjunct Donald Trump's ascendant. So what could destroy Trump as a sun god? What do you guys think in the comments? We might know by the time we get to the September 9th. Again, something's going on in Donald Trump's chart that suggests some reason for him not to continue in the race, which after getting backing by RFK, I'm not sure what that could possibly be. Now, here we have the sky. So I mentioned Venus and it's really a hot mess here. And a lot of you, I know you don't like when I do what I'm about to do, but it does make it a lot simpler for people if I delete everybody who we don't need to see. This is about a Venus, Uranus, Neptune, Mercury week for the all signs. Let's just make it a little more simple, right? I know where the planets are. I can tell you where they are if that helps you, right? If you want me to tell you where the planets are, I can do that. There's Neptune, there's Mercury, there's Venus. Of course, we want Uranus, right? And we got to keep that guy in there. All right, we're going to do the all signs. If you're in the live premiere, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. It does help me thrive in this channel called YouTube. And every now and then YouTube does something weird, like pulls out subscribers. So all of the month of June, they dumped maybe 3,000 subscribers out, including my partner. If you think you're subscribed, you might not be. Go check again. They do this on the regular. I ended up with like only 1,600 subscribers in June, meaning that despite their dumping three or 4,000 at the bottom of my bucket, I still got more of you in. But just consider you might have been dumped out of the subscribing uh, subscription. Please don't tell me that you're going to unsubscribe because I don't, you don't like my messages about politics. I am actually just a messenger. Don't have to shoot me. It's astrology. I could be wrong. I have been right most of the time so far, right? Tim Walls, assassination attempt, Trump, you know, Biden stepping down, a lot of naysayers unsubscribe because of that. But then it came true. So why don't you just wait and see if what I say happens rather than shoot the messenger? What about that as an idea? Hmm? Okay. So here we have the sky this week. And this is simple, right? Simplified. Um, we still have these weird asteroids in here. Sorry about that. Um, gong, gong and Apophis, but just, just bear with it. There's asteroid America. Pluto's up there with America. Um, is there anything else I wanted to mention? Well, I'll put Pluto back in because I forgot to say that. Okay. Oh, you guys, sometimes astrology is like you're juggling so many balls at once and you're trying to tell a story with the balls in the air, you know? Yes, we do also have Pluto moving into Aquarius, of course, but I just did a huge, long two and a half hour video almost for your sign on the meaning of the grand finale of Pluto and Aquarius. So please go watch that video because it'll really help. I mean, Pluto into Capricorn, it'll really help you understand what you and Pluto are doing in this reality of, of your life. And so Pluto does slide into Capricorn on the 20 September the 1st Sunday next week go watch that video it'll help you figure out what you are finishing up that you've been working on for 16 months all right that's important I'll bring it up again next week in the week ahead as well okay we're going to start talking about the sky at this juncture and move through I put a bunch of stars here Elkade some really cool guys are in here and I will talk about it because Venus is in touch with these stars. So let me just briefly say this. We have three stars that Venus is hunkered down and talking to LK calamity, the star of female mourners. I already talked about her proximity to that star this week. And with Venus being a female and also female mourners, it reminds me of when Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, there was a lot of star of female mourners on the North node or South node of the sky at the time. And there was indeed mourning by women that a female justice had died. But we also have this fixed star Savijava, Savijava, 
And it is the left wing of the maiden, you know, the maiden being Virgo, the virgin, offering protective influences and blessings, and it offers strength to uphold justice, and it protects from injustice, stands up for what is right, and can be heroic in that effort. So heroic efforts around justice and standing up for justice in some way, even though we have the star female mourners, we also have that narrative as well. And we have another star here called Merkeb, not Merkab. Merkab. And Merkab, I have it in this book. Where did it go? The little book of fixed stars, maybe. Um, where is it? Nope, I don't have it there. Huh. It must have been Merkab in another book I have handy. Give me 30 seconds, guys. It could be Oscar, Oscar's fixed stars. <laughs> little book here. Yes, it is. So this is Oscar Hoffman's book on fixed stars. And he says about Merkab, he says it is a wide knowledge, educational work, voyages and piety. And he talks about um, profitable journeys where the native suffers a lot of injury, but ultimately things turn to good. So it's kind of a rainbow at the end of the storm star as well. So we got these three stars bundled up with Venus in the sky. It's LK that catches my attention. It is about mass calamity and female mourning, just with Venus crossing there once a year. We don't have that every year. So I'm not too sure we need to worry about it too much, but let's get going. Ah, I'm in a window and the light is really hurting in my eyes and it's a weird lighting. Sorry about that. I don't have any, when it's a sunny day in my office, I have bad lighting. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's get going. We're starting with the Aries people and we're going to indicate what this week is about for you. All right, settle in, get a pen and paper or relax and put your feet up. Here we get going with this. Uh, please tell me I'm recording. Yeah, I am. Okay, so all of us Aries, sun, moon and rising, sun, purpose, career, moon, body, home, safety or whatever, ascendant all about you um wh what i want to note is that venus is moving through a place of work and health matters and work and health and pets and sometimes rental situations and as she's moving through this part of the sky she opens up monday and tuesday with a beautiful surprise financially it would be money surprise to work related endeavors most likely but if you're trying to buck a habit of a food style you can also have a breakthrough in a pleasure that's not good for your health monday and tuesday Ultimately, when she's involved in things to do with finances and six house, we're talking Artha, we're talking things to do with work. And so in that regard, your work matters are highlighted here. Please ignore the kite. It's not a real kite. We have an out of sign Pluto. So I think maybe, again, let's just take Pluto out of the story so that we don't get super focused on him and maybe honestly get rid of all those darn asteroids and even the stars because I know where the stars are. We don't have to talk about them by seeing them. That's what it really looks like. Um, so I like this energy a lot with Venus here. I think with Venus in your sixth house, you're going to find some more satisfaction Monday, Tuesday in the work you do, more fun, more enjoyment, but more wealth. And the wealth may be a surprise. Then when we move on to the 28th, what do you have to clear? What illusions and delusions have, have been troublesome for you? And often, you know, she's not in a love house. She's in a, a work house and 12th house is also our own self undoing. This is the actress axis of addiction. Sometimes you might find yourself, uh, you know, leaning into pleasures, Venus that are not good for your health. And she's very detailed and practical or practical here. So there may be a moment around Wednesday, right? Where Venus is going to say, Hmm, let's take a deeper look at some of the spell and enchantment these substances hold over you and let's see what we can un undo here disenchantment right disillusionment get illusions and disillusionments around addiction self-undoing around maybe a relationship in your work setting with somebody that you work with as well and coming to more clarity about that condition situation and work health and addictions perhaps what also is going on is we can see that as we go into the Wednesday, Thursday timeframe, we get a direct motion Mercury. Hallelujah. So Mercury will be moving direct on Wednesday, the 28th. And this is going to indicate you're finally ready to go forward from something that you have been dealing with in the Leo sky since the shadow period of Mercury direct here began on July the 15th. So 
if you go back to July the 15th, and then you realize that you had to rethink something here, Mercury the last three weeks before now has been retrograding. You're reconsidering things to do with your children, your romantic and sexual life, with your creative projects and your entrepreneurial businesses. So this area of your chart is highlighted. Where are you now ready to move forward? You've got the clarity you need. You've got the understanding. You've got the ideas in place. Because we have money luck here, especially through gaming and speculation, and with Venus getting ready to move into Libra on September 4th, there's a possibility that this turnaround could indicate between September the... Mm, Okay, this is where you've got to get a serious brain brain uh, thing fixed, Lori. Yes, so, so August the 29th, sorry, between August the 29th, which happens to be, of course, August the 29th, Thursday, between August the 29th and September the 9th, we have this whole sign flow between these two planets. If you're going to win some money, if you want to win a ticket, you want to get a good gamble going, if you want to get a, a, something positive happening in your financial gain, this is your window of time for that success. So Mercury Direct, now talking to Venus and Libra, my video on Venus and Libra is already out, is a nice little window, August the 29th through to September the 8th, really, because we're as you know, Mercury will leave this sign right here, kaboom, and he lands his ass in Virgo around the ninth. So you would like this luck factor, then take advantage of it, know your limit, play within it, but you could play tickets or game for some money and, and it may work for you. It may, when he's direct, when he's direct, <laughs> the 28th to no, the 29th when Venus gets into Libra through to the 8th of September. And that's about all I got for you. I would also mention that Mercury in your fifth house is brilliantly connected to ideas that are creative because he was in the heart of the sun around August the 19th. You may have gestated or be gestating incredible new creative ideas or entrepreneurial ideas. I downloaded a new idea called the 144 gates during the Kazemi. So looking for ways that your new ideas can begin to generate something for you and begin to take action on them after the station direct on Wednesday the 28th and communication with your children, or things to do with your children, have you, if you have children, begin to move forward from a place of stasis or uncertainty, the things that you were considering about or with a child since July the 15th. And now you've got this clarity of mind uh, to move forward in a positive way. So don't forget, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. The only reason I'm pausing my recording is I need to make an adjustment to the chart. So I, you guys don't need to sit through that. And I'll get that done. And I have an election panel I'm putting into place in October of some astrologers and readers of tarot readers and brilliant astrologers. And I'm trying to find some astrologer that is pro Trump and thinks Trump would win. Um, there is Joni Petrie, and I might ask her to come on my channel. I did meet her at NCGR. She may say yes. But if you have a recommendation for me about an astrologer you follow who believes Donald Trump is going to win the election or that the Republican Party will win the election, please let me know in the comments below or email me as well. You go to my website and I have a contact form there. All information like my website is in my description box. I'm having a hard time right now finding an astrologer who I think is qualified you know, a good astrologer who is actually pro yes, Trump will win in the astrology itself. So if you have someone, please, please let me know. I'd love to know um, so that I can invite them in. There's nothing worse than an astrology panel in which everybody agrees, right? If you don't have any feisty dis disagreement, it's not going to be very much fun. So I, I'm throwing it out to you guys. Let me know who you watch, who is an astrologer that you think has some creds, who might actually see uh, Trump and or the Republicans winning, reminding us all that maybe Trump isn't in it for the long game, right? We don't know yet. We will see. Um, now moving backwards, and this is going to, my time stamping sister is going to hate this, that I started a story and now I bumped backwards. Sorry, Nancy. Here we go. Hang on. Oh my God. Just when you need this guy to actually line up, it's not going to. There we go. Now I'm bringing you guys back. 
Wow, it's getting dark here. <laughs> like it's light, it's dark, it's dark, it's light. Still recording? Am I still recording? <gasps> I thought I paused the recording. Okay, I didn't. Okay. Well, of course I was talking to you. What am I thinking? Here we have it. All right. I remember they used to say take lecithin for mental clarity. I mean, I do take a ton of supplements and I eat all kinds of healthy foods like walnuts, but also anybody out there who goes, yes, I had menopause brain or post COVID brain, which is basically brain damage. And you want to give me any mental acuity suggestions, please too. I would appreciate that as well. Now we're moving on. We're moving into the Taurus story, right? So Taurus, this week ahead, what a gift. You know, Venus is the Lord of your sign and she's going to love up Uranus from the sign of Virgo. So this is a nice little delightful surprise. Maybe Sunday, Monday, Tuesday might feel like you just stepped into some kind of awesome, awesome energetic where it's a little bit like, you know, um, this, <laughs> the hills are alive with the sound of music. And the music is playing in your sexual romantic love house. This is where you find pleasure and play and fun. This is where you enjoy the time with your lover. This is your children, more fun with your children, blessings for your children. This is also um, a place where quite possibly you could be pregnant or a child could be pregnant because Venus is in a fertility transit. But nonetheless, the hills are alive with the sound of music or something like that because the joy factor is up leveled ever since she's been in Virgo for you, but you got to remember now she's adding the spice of Uranus. And so what is this pleasant surprise, this happy surprise, this exciting surprise? Does your child excel at something? Do you get a gift from your lover? Do you have the most amazing Sunday, Monday, Tuesday um, enervation? Okay. Does a creative project fifth house suddenly have a download insight Uranus? pineal gland. Aha. Uh -huh. Does your entrepreneurial business suddenly have a bit of a sweet touch where something goes very, very well and it surprises you? Anything to do with entrepreneurial independent businesses can get a sweet, sweet, happy surprise. Elgil is a finance star. Elgil is a star of wealth. So a financial wealth up as well with entrepreneurial and uh, all such endeavors can come your way. Um, independent business enterprise, being your own boss of your own company, things like this go well at this time, most likely, right? And you feel surprised or happy about it. Now, if you're single and you want to date somebody under this, go for it. This would indicate a relationship that's a little bit outside the box, something new, something a little bit more, you know, edgy, maybe a little polyamory up the sleeve or something a little bit uh, outside the normative of what you normally do. But indeed, dating here is okay. This could be a very powerful new relationship that can form if you are a Taurus on a date during this Monday, to, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday energy. Moving into the next story, we see Mercury station. Oh, means we'll keep going with Venus opposite Neptune, un unburdening you from what has been. <laughs> because you're going to relieve yourself of some fantastical illusions to do with love, love and friendship, friendship and love. I mean, the two axes of friends and lovers or unburden yourself from issues to do with your financial matters connected to your career and the entrepreneurial instinct or the creative impulse. But whatever it is, it's just a, it's already an, an illusion that's being retracted by retrograde Neptune. So now you just take it a little bit further with some support from Venus, looking squarely at your own delusions around love, your own illusions around money and business matters, and really squaring away, opposing it really with what you need to see and what you need to come to terms with in those areas. Now, don't start a new relationship per se on Wednesday when this is exact, because then that relationship might be under the spell of rose-colored glasses. It's safer on to start a new relationship on Sunday, Monday than it is on Wednesday, Thursday. Then we move into the fact that you're going to experience as the sky cleans up the act of Leo, you're going to experience the beginning of a direct motion energy where between the 28th of the month 
which this happens to be Wednesday through to September the 8th, 9th, you've got clarity of what you want to do with land, home, property, and real estate, marketing, selling, merchandise, and my, merchandising, including mortgages and monies involved in land and real estate, selling and buying. Now with Mercury down here, he's going to be direct. I want you to go back to July the 15th when he was in a shadow period. What were you engaging in around July the 15th that you're now reconsidering, reassessing, and you have met mental clarity and you have the right idea about what to do. And of course, Mercury can be things like news, information, and phone calls coming through your sky with this clarity as well, Wednesday. Now you could even feel it, you know, late Thursday, Wednesday into Friday, this turnaround station energy where you're getting that phone call, email, or text message that sort of cements into place an area that you wanted to go forward in, in July 15th. Then there was retrogradation for three weeks in August, and now you're going to go forward again. So moving into new terrain with a, a, a Mercury who on August the 19th was infused with divine instructions in the heart of the sun. So whatever direction Mercury takes you is the correct direction, is the right move, is the really the way to go. And with Jupiter, I didn't put Jupiter in here, but you know, with Jupiter in the second house of money, and Mars, very heroic, witnessing the direct motion, witnessing the direct motion of Mars. This is also just to say, there may be some sense of financial relief here for some of you connected to matters to do with domestic life, property, and home. With Venus moving into Libra, if you need or want to rent a home, and you're looking to rent a new home as a Taurus, or to be a landlord to find a lease for a property, then once she moves into Libra, you're going to find that on the 29th, the idea, oops, huh, sorry. When she moves into Libra on the 29th, the idea of you being able to command some kind of rental situation and have it work on your behalf is also highly effective. Now, if you want to buy a pet or get a pet, Venus moving into Libra as well. Watch my Venus and Libra video supports that narrative as well. As I said, you're going to see Venus like de definitely having in her own kingdom of dignity here on the 29th, which is August the 24th, an incredible amount of support for rental properties, pet situations, as well as the ability to pay down a mortgage or pay off a debt. So that's a week, week's end story, Thursday onward. Gemini, sun, moon, and rising sign Venus is, this week is a Venus ruled story, but Mercury's your messenger and your planetary ruler is also mucked up in this week's big stories as well. When we see this Mercury direct, it matters to you. So let's start with that just because it's so important for Gemini's. You know, if you want to go back to July 15th, what were you, changes were you trying to make in social media, writing projects, communications around writing projects, things to do with travel, things to do with travel arrangements, things to do with domestic travel, things to do with your neighbor's neighborhood and younger sibling. A lot of activity there back in July the 15th, and maybe then some delays in the last first three weeks of August kind of vibe as Mercury Station to go retrograde. I believe Mercury Station to go retrograde around August the 4th. This is what happens when you do a lot of astrology. These dates are just roughly in your brain. Just trust me, all that matters is that Mercury is moving direct. So now you're going into direct motion and where you're going to go direct with your ideas, your communications and your clarity mentally is in all of the situations I've outlined, including things like, you know, teaching skills-based learning and teaching. For me, I have a progressed Gemini son. It was me changing the start date, reneging, going back instead of starting a sky reader early September, it's late September, made a change of mind. Now I can go forward. So consider that these changes in the third house have direct momentum and things are going to pulse forward with great success. Now, Venus at the beginning of the week on Monday and Tuesday, you can feel it Sunday, trines Uranus, happy money or love surprises, positive developments there. It can be about your children, a breakthrough with one of your children and an addiction. It could be happy love and money surprises, their addiction, not yours, regarding foreign land, money, revenue, international companies and international people that bring you a money, positive money surprise. Now, one of the things is, is that because this happens to occur, on the threshold of Venus going from 
your oh my god i'm sorry venus going from your fourth house to your fifth house that's why i said children it's an interesting overlap right something to do with family of origin family matters family values and children for some of you gets really highlighted around august of 28th 29th and in a positive surprising way if you are thinking of buying or selling a property about who's going to do that on the fly in one day but this surprise has a connection to what's going on in your home is it surprising developments around love money um, resources beauty beautification of your home who knows <laughs> but it's connected to your private life your home life and your land, property, domicile, and real estate. When Venus gets into an opposition to Neptune, you might want to duck a little bit about some need to clear up confusion or illusion regarding matters to do with your career and reputation. But because Venus is in the bottom of the chart, you're really quietly you know, not being all that public anyway. You're kind of like low-key socializing close to home. You're not standing with a mic in front of a stage. But some areas of confusion around how you'd like to execute career and reputation are being addressed. And Venus is down there, maybe taking stock of what you want to accomplish in your career. And in your home life, you're seeing more clearly what is possible, what is realistic, and what is fantastical. Don't forget, we have Saturn up here too. So Saturn, the realist, is making his own statement. Be realistic about what you actually want to accomplish in your career based on your family values, based on your life at home, and based on the, based on the idea you would like to actually enjoy your home. <laughs> because if you work as hard as me and I have a progression of my son, we're wondering where the enjoyment of our home life is because we're so busy working all the time from our home. All right. So there's just some ideas. I'm just pausing for chocolate. Yes, I'm pausing again on a Gemini or a Libra, but I'm having that moment of desire for chocolate talking about Venus in my home. Okay, guys, let's get rolling into the story. Oh, it is dark in here. Well, it'll be what it is. Okay. Here we have it. We're moving into Gemini territory, uh, out of Gemini territory. So Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising sign, it is a sky that opens up beautifully on kind of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, when you feel this money, luck, and love surprise, friendship surprise of Venus in a trine to um, Uranus on Algol. Now, there's money in the 11th house, including windfalls and pennies from heaven, and money you can get from an elder sibling or benefits from an elder sibling or allies, benefactors, those kinds of people who favor you because they just want to help you. And that Uranus shock surprise flows to third house, younger sibling, one older, one younger. So we got a vibe for some cancers of sibling surprises, maybe, but also early this week, surprises to do with travel plans and opportunities, uh, third house matters, uh, unexpected surprises and opportunities regarding social media exposure. If you have an online channel, social media outlet, uh, Venus down here is doing her little micro celebrity and you could have a nice pop in terms of broadcasting. You might find yourself, you know, offering a chance to go on a very famous podcast to speak in front of many people to be up leveled in terms of celebrity exposure. This is also, you know, through to Tuesday, you know, Monday, Tuesday, maybe a positive surprise regarding um, an opportunity for learning or a neighbor offers up an exciting surprise to attend a social event that really delights you. So these are lighthearted and positive vibes you're having Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. But as we move towards Wednesday, then Venus gets into a difficult conversation with Neptune retrograde. What areas of disillusionment and illusion and dis misunderstanding and self-deception have been needing to be Re redressed like Mercury, Neptune is rolling back the tide to see what's really there in the ninth house of your huh, spiritual philosophy, religious belief, book publishing uh, contact contacts, um, things to do with higher educational energies you know, colleges, schools, campuses, and legal matters as well with judges and courts. And now ultimately what Venus is doing is just a splash in the pan, right? It's kind of a Wednesday vibe. Maybe it'll feel just on Wednesday. A come to clarity moment, a come to a, 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 a deeper spiritual understanding of something that you really want to know. I mean, because in money, this is like the house of the goddess where Venus is and the house of God, where Neptune is. We're looking at an axis that's very metacosmos between the worlds. And for some of you, it could be a very good spiritual awakening, but it could also be some kind of reality check right saturn is up here too next to neptune not you can't see him but he's there 
a reality check about some kind of spiritual faith, some kind of uh, travel plan, domestic or long distance, or term, some kind of situation that may not be about you at all. It might be a reality check about a younger sibling, one younger than you, rather than a reality check that's yours to be checked. When you move into the energy of the station, direct, finally, of Mercury in the sign of Leo, I advise you to go back to July 15th when he was still in Leo and before he retrograded on the 4th or so September of August, because July 15th to August 4th, that's the terrain that he's now going to ask you to readdress. So what events did you have to rethink that you initiated around July the 15th, you know, through to maybe September 4th, and he went backwards and said, let's reassess this, and now he's going direct. And so there's things that were going on this summer, mid-July, and then reassessing it after August the 4th, and now you can go forward again. And that is about your money. That's about the way you make money. That's about your earnings and savings and spending habits and patterns. That's about your self-worth and self-esteem. It's also about what you put in your mouth and what you eat. And you may be going through a lot of back and forth about what it is you really want in this part of your chart. And this is something to say, you may have new ideas, but you almost might sell something here. Mercury can be a buying and selling a barter and trade. Is there something you were thinking of selling, a car, an object, a thing of belonging, a home? And you were thinking about it July 15th and you're reassessing it August 4th and now you're ready to go forward with it one way or the other. South Node is traveling through your fourth house. You can't see it, but trust me, it's there. And this is an eclipse cycle coming up October 2nd, hitting that South Node. And if you haven't sold your house yet in the last year, since last summer or last April, of 23, then some of you are still thinking about it, letting go, selling and releasing a home. And this could be what Mercury was engaging in. Should I sell? Should I hold? What should I do? You may have a change of direction with this decision. And where you're clear, you're trying to get the clarity about the decision is kind of really here. You know, it's on the 29th, which is Thursday, that Venus will slide into the sign of Libra and then be in a whole sign contact with Mercury in Leo. And therefore, things to do with property and resources and money and goodness and spending or buying are very activated for you on the 29th of August through to September the 8th. And that might be a crucible of choice points regarding buying and selling or spending for your home because Venus wants to beautify it, that kind of thing. And I have a Venus and Libra video that's already out. Please go watch it. The beginning of the video is world astrology, but the back end is all about you. And uh, that's all I have. Good luck with that. You cancer, sun, moon, and rising. All right, Leo, sun, moon, and rising sign. What happens is that this week starts off with Venus and Uranus in a happy dance of some kind of flow about career and money matters. And Leo's will find this could be a breakthrough. You get the, an offer for a job. You get the uh, interview of a lifetime. You get a little bit of a spark of more money from your work. Maybe a new assignment that's really plush. Maybe a little perk or of a raise or a promotion. Something like that that seems to want to surprise you. Now, I would give you one other thing. I mean, come on, Uranus is on algo, off with her head, and Venus is in detriment. And there's a strong possibility that even though it may look good at one level, trying, that it could be someone loses their job. You lose your job. If you lose a job off of this or someone in your workspace goes off the rails and the boss loses his head, it can still work out for you. It can still have a trine-like opportunity at the end of the darker storm. So it could go both ways with algal. But ultimately, the idea of Venus trining Neptune, Uranus is usually a happy surprise. Nine out of 10 times, you're going to prefer it than not prefer it around money, career, and finances energetically. And when we move to Wednesday, she comes Venus into an opposition to Neptune. Neptune is all about what you need to do, get disillusioned about or, or, or clear about and not be under a spell of, of rose-colored eye, eye goggles where you can't really see what's true. And that's to do with being realistic about the money you share with a spouse, a business partner, or your investment monies and your bank loans and your mortgages. And you get to eyeball that much more realistically and inheritance monies around the 
Wednesday, the 28th, and watch out for swindling energy. Venus and her fall, Neptune in the eighth house can be fishing expeditions and swindlers and shysty uh, people trying to steal your money or not steal necessarily, but, you know, delude you into spending money that you don't need to spend, for example. So be cautious with that kind of energy for sure around Wednesday, the 28th. And then Mercury on Wednesday also stations direct. If you go back to July 15th to the 4th of August, that's when you were thinking you were going to move forward on something that you had a handle on, uh, Mercury in the sign of you. I talked about Donald Trump. You know, he, that's when he picked J.D. Vance, I think. So after he was assassinated, maybe he's going to change his mind. So what were you doing July 15th to August 4th? It was, yay, I got this. This is my idea. This is my, th I'm thinking this is right. Then Mercury started to retrograde August the 4th to the 28th. And of course, Trump got in hot water with the Vance thing because, you know, of all the old clips of Vance calling women cat women, old cat ladies running the world or something, childless cat ladies running the world and much more. And so, you know, that was like, oh my God, he probably thought maybe I should change my mind. Maybe he thought I should change his mind about running when Biden was swapped out for Kamala. So where have you been thinking about changing your mind or changing your direction or your idea about something ever since maybe August the 4th to now when you were going one way, July 15th to August 4th, then you kind of reconsidered it August the 4th to August 28th. And now you're ready to make, make hay, take action. But you know, August the 28th and September the 9th, you're going to make changes of mind or act or, or decisions or like ideas right now. You've got, you know what you need and you know what you want. Let's see what Trump does with that. Um, I would say also with Venus on the 29th, the day after moving into Libra flowing to Mercury in the first house, there may be elements of the third house that become very highlighted for you. Decisions around travel, study, learning, uh, neighbors, neighborhood. I mean, certainly Trump, the stumper, right? Having to go out and travel. There'll be some decisions around his travel schedule, as well as announcements he would make to the media, the media's third house. So for Trump, it looks like making media announcements on the 29th or 30th. What does it mean for you? Are you going to plan a trip, email a sibling, uh, make a conversation happen with a neighbor who you really don't want to have beside you? Things like that because you've changed your mind and you reassess things and now you're going to go forward. Think of it that way. You know, Venus will be moving through Libra for three weeks. Go check out the video on that. It does bless you in all things third house. So I'm not going to cover that here. The, the beginning of that blessing is this week on Thursday. Virgo, sun, moon, and rising. Wow. So Virgo, you're ruled by Mercury. I'm starting there. He's going direct. He's going direct in your 12th house. I want you to go back to July 15th through to August the 4th. You are moving forward in addictions, <laughs> in things to do with self-sabotage and self-undoing, in regards to long distance travel plans. You were going backwards in terms of for, back forward, you know, July 15th, August 4th with ideas and thoughts and you know, whatever about um, money you can make from foreign places and far off lands or travel to far off foreign lands, you're moving forward. And then, uh-oh, August the 4th, Mercury begins to roll back and maybe think about changing his mind, reinvestigating, rethinking those 12th house foreign travel plans, addiction, self-undoing matters. And then Mercury goes direct. And that direct motion on Wednesday, the 28th through to September 9th, you're ready to take direct action on matters connected to the themes that I have just outlined. So if you've been thinking of that travel plan and you have been waffling and you reassessed, now you're going to go forward. If it's about addiction, so you got your, you got your plan in place, you know what you're going to do next, that kind of thing. No more self-sabotage for you. And if it is about an addiction, like getting over a substance, like you smoke too much, drink too much, smoke too much weed, whatever it is, the real turning point is when Venus moves into Libra on Wednesday, because as soon as she goes here, she allows for balance in your oral pleasures, right? Or your nasal pleasures, balance there. And so if he comes into pleasure balance alignment for you on the 29th, Thursday, and from Thursday, the 29th to September the 8th, cooperates with Mercury in the house of addictions. That's a really ideal time to find a perfect addictions counseling solution or to move in a new direction of understanding about why you sabotage yourself in some way. 
When it comes to travel plans, similarly, possibly, you see the same energy being more smooth and you know what exactly to do for that long distance travel plan once Venus moves into balanced Libra, which is not a policy about spending with balance. You don't want to spend too much on some foreign trip. So now you found the, 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 in, the in-between uh, possible, you know, a great trip without breaking the bank kind of thing. And you'll see that possibility of organizing those arrangements for such a trip or, or figuring it all out more clearly, more clearly on the 29th of, of August to September the 9th or so when there's a dialogue between Venus and Mercury. Now we start off the week, as I mentioned, Monday, Tuesday, Venus is giving you a happy surprise around visas, passports, travel plans, um, legal matters, legal and court situations, and things to do with academics, like a sudden acceptance at your favorite university, a book publishing deal out of the blue, sudden kind of shocking, surprising, but positive information coming through the ninth house sky from Uranus. Okay. So it's an ideal little perk of yay you of uh, September, August 26th and 27th on Wednesday, the 28th, Venus opposes Neptune. Well, this is just a bit of a, let's get our disillusionment, illusionment stories down. Like, are you, were you seeing your partner through some kind of rose colored glasses here, Neptune in the house of long-term love, or were they, were they seeing you that way? And ultimately, with the retrogradation of Neptune ongoing now, there's been already a reality check. Saturn is here as well, retrograde. So the retrogradation is pulling back the illusion tides and the misunderstandings and the delusional energy in a long-term relationship. And there's this moment of Wednesday, the 28th, where there's a penetrating clarity as you really see clearly through the eyes of Venus, practical Virgo, right? Love is practical. Love is realistic. Love is sensible. And you see sensibility in that relationship. The sensible thing to say or do or know is obvious for you on Wednesday, the 28th. And... That's what I've got for you. I hope that's useful for you guys in the week ahead. It's a light week, guys. It's one of my slower, uh, shorter videos, I would say. <sighs> Sorry. And by the hour. Hey, Libra, you're ruled by Venus. What a week it is. Venus is starting Monday, Tuesday in a beautiful trine to Uranus. And that's sim simply said, some positive money and love surprises in general, but also from your eighth house of chunky money. It is also in the 12th house of foreign revenue and far off lands. You may have a nice little boost of money from foreigners, foreign places and foreign shores, or some kind of positive energy regarding a stock investment or a mortgage or a bank loan or an inheritance matter. A nice little bubble of yay you coming through the sky. Just a pleasant surprise or unexpected development Monday and Tuesday. When we move into Wednesday, though, Venus opposes Neptune in the house of axis of self undoing and addictions and health. And you may have this, you know, realistic, realistic reality check moment regarding your work and health matters and the ways you are also your own worst enemy. Now with Venus and Virgo for three weeks beforehand, you've been liking your pleasures alone. You've been spending time alone and pleasure and alone is one and the same, but maybe too much alone pleasure meant too many sneaky pleasures that weren't good for you. Did you smoke too much weed alone? <laughs> Did you drink too much wine to eat too much haagen -Dazs? Now you're coming to a realistic look at and there's a tendency for hidden addictions and self and pleasure and aloneness and self undoing. And you might square away with a clarity about what you want to do about that situation if it does exist for you. Okay. And Mercury will move direct and he, he'll move direct after retrogradation. So go back to July 15th when he was going forward over degrees in your 11th house that are now going to be reassessed. So July the 15th to August 4th, you had plans, you know what you're up to, you had something going on here, you were thinking it. So <laughs> July 15th, to August 4th is very social energy, expanding your networks of friends, being very connected, emails, phone calls, and text messages to a lot of people that you know, July 15th to August the 4th. And then, oh no, we got to go back and reassess this, including deals and negotiations around matters to do with income and revenue and and even things to do with social media platforms and being on someone's like talk show or something, all that pulled back, rolled back, rolled back as of the 4th of August, where you had to rethink it. 
And now you're going to go forward because now you did all the rethinking you need, all the renegotiating you need. And you probably heard from friends you hadn't heard from forever when he was retrograde up there. But now you're going to go forward and you're going to make decisions and take action on things that you've now straightened up. You've got the way to go forward in your career gains, your social networks, your groups of belonging, your social clubs, the people that you call your large groups of friends, your connection to an elder sibling are all going to go into forward, clear, clean direction from the 28th when Mercury stations direct of this week, which is Wednesday through to September the 9th. With Virgo on the 20, with Venus moving from Virgo on the 29th to your first house, this is opening up a time where you are actually feeling really good about yourself, attractive, you know, likable, you like yourself, you're persuasive. And it's a really good time to get yourself out into 11th house frameworks, social events, social groups, uh, large exposure to large groups of people. Your charismatic factor is over the top and you being engaged in career matters connected to career gains and, and socializing and meeting people and networking are amplified for success particularly from the date of the 29th of August to September the 9th. Use it or lose it. Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising sign. In the sky this week ahead, Venus offers up some lo lovely enchantment as she gives you a money or love surprise, perhaps, because it's an Uranus an algal, uh oh, hopefully your partner doesn't lose their head, but in the house of long term committed love partners and its surprising energy connected to Venus in the house of friends, social groups, networks, and social activities, it could be as simple as an unexpected, surprising, and delightful Sunday through Tuesday social obligation or delight going to a concert, going to a large event, going to a party through connections with friends and significant others like spousal type relationships or a business opportunity in a legal contract that delights you, especially with Mercury in your 10th house shows up for you and you get to sign on the contractual dotted line. When you move to Wednesday, Venus opposes Neptune for a reality check around some rose-colored glasses when it comes to entrepreneurial business, creative projects, and romantic love, as well as fertility and pregnancy. And you're coming into a bit of a, okay, let me figure this out. I'm going to get really practical, really sensible about those matters. And you're just seeing what is real and what is true versus what is illusional at that time. As we move through on, to, uh, on the 28th as well, Mercury will go direct in your career house. Now, if you go back to July 15th to August 4th, you are plowing ahead with projects, ideas, promotions, raises, whatever you were doing, communicating publicly with Mercury in the 10th house. So things that happen July the 15th through to August the 4th, then you sort of went, oh, let's roll back some Mercury retrograde energy, moonwalk backward here and rethink those career matters. Now, some of you looking for work may have gotten work from places you've worked before, old clients and customers coming back, old job opportunities, but you were also were plowing forward and you pulled back to rethink something, go over old ground again. So the ground you traveled in career matters, July 15th to August 4th, were retread backwards, August 4th to July 28th. What are you going to do next? Because now that Mercury goes direct on Wednesday the 20th, you're ready between Wednesday the 28th this week and September 9th to take direct and immediate action to affect the ideas and changes are necessary in your career and reputation space. When Venus also moves on the 29th into Libra, some of those changes may deal with money made from foreign places and foreign shores through your career or changes in your career path connected to things you're doing alone and in solitude or maybe especially for those of you who are self-employed, a lot of alone time to retool your career space into a new direction as Venus and Libra will spend three weeks in your 12th house of solitude. All right, let's continue on. Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. The week starts with a blessed trine between Venus and Mercury, uh, so Venus and Uranus. So what kind of happy uh, work and career matters are up for you? Uh, kind of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you kind of feel excited, exhilarated, maybe surprised by something that's coming through uh, work, colleagues, coworkers, and maybe 
uh, your career boss reputation. If you're not employed, then you're going to get a reputation glow up in the work you do in the world, whether it's a service or it's paid service, it doesn't matter. This is a nice little boost for some work spark of celebrity or popularity, et cetera. And you might be having an unexpected social obligation connected to coworkers. Like we're all going out to the, this concert. We got tickets from our clients and you're so happy to go out and have fun in a social thing with colleagues and coworkers. Something simple, right? It doesn't always have to be profound. Algol is a wealth star though. And because this is a, a Artha access, you may have an unexpected boost to wealth through your career and reputation matters on Monday, Tuesday. On Wednesday, Venus opposes Neptune. Well, you have to figure out something to do with your illusions around your home life, your situation at home. You've got Saturn here. You might be feeling melancholic and isolated in the home. He's not drawn in there. He's there, uh, burdened by the home and burdened by what has been in the home. And you really want to move on from the home burdens, you know? And, oh, okay, Neptune's got you kind of confused and fogged out about how to do that. He's rolling back retrograde, giving you more clarity over the next few months. But this is Venus chiming in. And maybe something goes on on Wednesday where you see more clearly how to relieve yourself of some challenges in your home in a very practical way by opportunities in the public or the career sector that can rise you up out of the home, maybe, and give you a little more focus outside of your cave, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, station direct Mercury happens on Wednesday the 28th, and your Mercury direct is a sign that something that started July 15th in your ninth house that you were really focused on, and that's to do with long distance travel, pilgrimages, higher education, court and legal matters, and things to do maybe with um, book publishing projects. Those things were like July 15th, August 4th, you had an idea, you thought you knew what you wanted. Uh Uh-oh, August 4th, Mercury goes backwards over the same ground that started July 15th to rethink it until the 28th of this month. So this is the turnaround point. What have you been digesting and reconsidering around the ninth house matters that I mentioned to you already, you know, course, foreign travel, a higher level, academic, spiritual philosophy, pilgrimage. So, pilgrimages. so now you're kind of going backwards and now you're going forwards again to make ideas work here, to take uh, your new ideas or new thoughts or new understanding and move it forward. Because also you're going to see that Venus on the 29th, which is Thursday, steps into Libra between the 29th of this month of August and the 9th of September, you've got support from Mercury and Venus to succeed in the following areas. Publications and book publishing, large groups and large social settings and favors from friends in high places or things to do maybe with um, travel opportunities with friends or large groups of people and organizing such a trip or things to do with teaching and courses and organizing it amongst larger groups of people. Those things kind of vibe out for you and uh, some include far off and distant shores as well as a clear ideation or planning time for you around the 29th of August to September the 9th. Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising sign. This is a story of a happy surprise between Venus in your ninth house and Uranus in your fifth. This is Monday and Tuesday, and it looks like a delightful surprise about pregnancy, fertility for you or one of your children more likely. I'm a grandparent, look at me. Or an unexpected money surprise from a house of money luck connected to far off foreign shores, foreign places, and foreign lands. Or a happy little surprise about a travel opportunity connected to romantic love. Or an entrepreneurial creative surprise that connects you to publications and publications and podcasting and Night House Matters. For example, let me know how it goes. When I see this, I have always a poll on my Patreon where I ask people to tell me about their Venus Uranus surprises. I'm getting this flavor of it from the reporting, like the database of my Patreon community. So I'll be putting that question out to them today. (laughs) Also, Venus tussles in a Neptune opposition on Wednesday. She wants to have clear understanding from delusion, delusional free understanding and clarity about travel things, younger siblings, neighbor neighborhoods, and educational things that need to need to clear a fog of confusion and make it more realistic, practical, and sensible. That's all I got to say about that. And Mercury has direct. 
on the 28th, which is Wednesday. And that means that you are moving forward on something that you've been going backwards over. Now, if you go back to July the 15th, what were you considering around investments, bank loans, mortgages, shared monies with a spouse or business partner, inheritance monies, royalty income? What were you thinking about those eighth house kinds of money that I call chunky money? What were you considering July 15th? If you can remember, you know, thinking about ideating on and doing your books and accounting on what were you thinking about back then? Because from July the 15th to August the 4th, your mind was there or the mind of the sky was there. And then the mind of the sky turned around on August the 4th through to August the 28th to rethink it, reconsider it. Right. And now you're ready to make forward directions around those kinds of finances or all of the above timeframes could have connected to things you wish to learn about tarot, astrology, alchemy, any of the occult mysteries as well. For some of you who are deep into learning those things, because Venus on the 29th moves into Libra, your 10th house, this indicates a short window of time. So use it or lose it or let it use you a short window of time on the 29th of the month of August to September the 8th, basically 9th, 8th, 9th, where Mercury wants to bring you some chunky money at, through career opportunities or inheritance money through reputation matters. I don't know how it could be reputation. So it's more likely career and money like a sign-on bonus, uh, severance package. What do you call it? Like when someone wants to buy your book, they give you a chunk of money, a forward of money. So things like that could happen for you in that short little window of time where Venus is blessing your career and reputation space anyway, right? For three weeks, but this is Mercury in the eighth house going direct in Leo after so many months, two months there, it's finally ready to put the money, money on the mark when it comes to career, reputation, and long-range chunky finance matters. Again, the money of your eighth, eighth house is often just money makes money. It's not you getting a paycheck. Where is that unexpectedly, you know, easier money, the chunks of money, res, you know, coming to you for your career? Okay, I don't know. You let me know, will you? Hmm. And money from far off foreign places connected to career as well as Venus is transitioning from one place to the other. All righty. I am indeed one of you. I am Aquarius rising and you are Aquarius rising sun or moon. And you're listening because it's a delightful Monday, Tuesday as Venus trines Uranus on Algol. Yippity doo da, yippity day. How are you going to be surprised by home property, land, real estate, chunky money? It's that simple. Don't know what it's going to be. You tell me, but you're going to find something good going on here. Um, Algol wealth, land, property, real estate. Venus is an inheritance house. Maybe some legacy wealth comes to you unexpectedly. Maybe somebody is going to gift you some money from your family of origin. Um, but it's coming through with a surprise on Monday and Tuesday. And you're going to feel good about it because it is hitting a money axis in your eighth house and a fourth house axis. Also, things with mortgages, loans, banks, and land, property, and real estate. Positive surprises coming through Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, a bit of a reality check. Venus squares off with Neptune in the spending house and the savings house. And this is a longer term resources of your, your 401k. And you're just coming to sensible, sensible clarity around those kinds of money. Already Neptune's retrograde. He's already pulled back any confusion and illusion around your savings assets and resources and possessions in your second house. Venus is just checking in with him going, I'm sensible. I'm in v I'm in Virgo. So let's make sure we got a sensible plan around money in our life, basically. And Wednesday, you have that clarity, I hope. Um, you've been going back and forth in the long-term committed love story house, right? Mercury was here in shadow. Period. Okay. Mercury was in direct motion July 15th to August 4th in this part of your chart indicating that you were moving forward with some kind of plan or some kind of idea or some kind of communication or some kind of contractual agreements connected to seventh house people. That could be anybody who wants you to sign something on a dotted line, or it can be communicating with your business partner or your spousal type relationship partner. A lot of conversations here for two months because Mercury has, was here for a dog's age, July and August because of retrogradation. But on, on, it was on the 15th of the month 
of August that you thought you knew what was going to go on. You had it down. You were moving in a direction by August the 4th. And then all of a sudden Mercury decides to go backwards and rethink it. So you were covering old ground with business partnerships, with, with your audience marketplace too. You know, if you have an audience clients in marketplace 10th from your 10th, that's where you're communicating with them. So you might've retrenched the way you communicate with those people, like gone back and rethought it. How am I going to communicate with my people in my audience and marketplace and client space as well? And then you've been going backwards and now you're ready to go forward, renewed and ready to speak into those relationships. But this could also be about your partner. So as on Wednesday, Mercury stations direct, maybe your partner was going back and forth over old ground and communications and confusions and reassessing something. And they're going to be the ones communicating love and business partners on, on Wednesday, direct motion about something that they've been reconsidering and reconsidering about their relationship. And as you get this direct motion Mercury moving forward on the 28th, and you have Venus moving into the ninth house and your partner, maybe you want to talk to you about Visas, passports, foreign lands, foreign shores, uh, educational stuff, uh, your spiritual shared philosophies, because that's when that communication can flow between August the 29th and September the 8th, when we have Venus and Mercury in a whole sign sextile. So look for that as well. Otherwise, you could be sealing deals and making contracts and agreements around publications, book publishing, higher level academic settings. Um, etc. Okay. Looking forward to seeing what happens for me on that. I hope my partner isn't going to say, I want to move to Siberia. <laughs> okay. Moving forward. Um, and when I say contracts, any contracts, you sign a lease, you sign an agreement, right? We've got Elgol 27 degrees conjunct Mars on July 15th. Was it July 15th? Massive change in your home is coming. You signed a legal contract to buy or rent or sell a home, right? So Eek. So that also can be the turnaround around agreements regarding home and property that is now clear from when, from the 29th, really positively from the 29th to the September 9th, some redirections in those kinds of agreements may occur, but with clarity and certainty of a Mars now liberated from this Kazemi uh, this retrograde. And he did Kazemi in your seventh house of contracts and real estate and real and, uh, contracts and legal agreements and significant others in marriage and love and business. And so now there's a new beginning there. And now we're moving forward in that new beginning. Finally, Pisces, sun, moon, and rising sign. Wow. So in the beginning of this week, we see Monday and Tuesday, Venus, the exaltation Lord of your sign is flowing in a beautiful trine to Uranus from the house of your marriage partnership. So First off, partner says, I got a getaway trip. Let's go two days away in Las Vegas. Let's have some fun. So some of you may have an unexpected travel opportunity, short distance that surprises you because of your partner or your way you reach out to your audience and marketplace. If you're social media land and you get online and you do all that kind of stuff like I do, has a blow up, blow up, a popular appeal with the audience and you're on is the internet and you go a little mini viral on something. That's possible for some Pisces. You may have some surprises with neighbors and neighborhood and younger sibling connected to agreements and contracts as well, but they're positive agreements, positive contracts, positive things going on in that vibration. Um, and then we see... Wednesday, Venus opposite Neptune. And where are you needing to, well, you already are. This is a retrograde Neptune clearing back your own foggy confusion, delusion around reality itself and life itself and yourself, yourself. And you also Saturn making you serious and realistic and capable of pulling back that Neptune, you know, enlightenment fog or fog of unconditional love or fog of transcendent awareness. And with Saturn in your first house, you're much more grounded, more realistic about what you're having to do in life. And that's true till February of 2026. So Neptune and Venus have a square a, an oppositional energy on Wednesday. It can be a difficult time with a significant marriage partner, but because it's sensible and realistic energies of Virgo and Pisces, and you've got Saturn, there's just a reality check about something going on in a significant business or love partnership or with a client situation, a customer situation on Wednesday. 
Okay, Wednesday, also Mercury stations direct in your sixth house of work and health matters, pets and rental matters. Now, if you want to go back to July the 15th, August the 4th, you thought you knew what you were doing, you knew your mind, you knew your mind, you're busy like communicating in your work set uh, environment maybe having lots of social time with your colleagues and coworkers. Maybe you were busy um, negotiating deals around pets and pet buying a pet or investigating things around pets. Maybe you were also thinking about health matters, getting a bunch of blood work, blood tests or, or health matters. When Mercury's here, people are often getting a bunch of blood tests done. I've seen it over and over. You know, they're getting their health work up. So you want the information, knowledge that you need about your health. So that would have been you, particularly what you did between July 15th about health matters and July 4th, then there was a, a retrenchment and Mercury recovered the old ground to rethink it here. And now he's going forward. So all that rethinking is finally leading or delay or delay is leading to forward momentum and the forward momentum in health and work and pets and, and rentals, that clarity and forward momentum is here. And you'll feel that momentum between Wednesday, the 28th and September the 9th, it gets even better once Venus moves on the 29th into, I mean, the 9th of September, once Venus on the 29th or Thursday moves into your eighth house and go watch my Venus and Libra video for the chunky money story. Once Venus gets there, she'll be in a whole sign flow to Mercury for a few days only. September, August the 29th to September the 9th. Oh, that's a golden ticket time for you to get something off the ground to do with the money's that are invested, that are inheritances, that are connected to insurance companies, mm -hmm, money by, you know, like proxy, it's uh, eighth house money is insurance companies, um, government monies, tax rebates, that kind of money smooths out for you in ways that you didn't expect getting your social insurance check, getting your, you know, welfare check, whatever you need, connected to being unemployed, things like that, or health matters and insurance and government monies, eighth house monies, other people's monies, work on your favor in your favor starting on the 29th to September the 9th. I have a Pisces sister who got a rejection from an insurance company on some medication. And I need, bet your bottom, bottom dollar that with this window of time, it will be straightened out. So use this for that kind of money to be organized if it deals with work, health, pets, or rentals, okay? That kind of money story can be fixed <laughs> in some way. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for a notification, help the channel grow. If the channel grows and thrives, I grow and thrive. The more that happens, the more I want to be here making videos for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, looking forward to getting in touch with you about next video, probably the Virgo new moon of September the 2nd. This also corresponding with a Uranus turned retrograde. Oh my God. <laughs> we'll talk about that on Thursday's video, which will be coming up on August the 29th. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.